First things first with batting. The tool of your trade is your bat. You need a bat that's really light that you can control. Especially control with your top hand. For right hand batters, obviously, that's your left hand. And if you want your left shoulder to control all your shots, you really need a bat that you can use and control well. Two ways of getting the correct grip. Firstly, you can lie the bat down, stand opposite the handle, literally put the two hands onto the handle, and make sure they come together. And what you'll actually see is a couple of Vs. One there with the bottom hand, the thumb and the first finger, just running down the back of the blade. And the top hand with a V, probably a little bit more central down the back of the handle. The other way of doing it is to take your normal side-on stance towards the bowler, just rest the toe of the bat on your back foot and the handle on the inside of your thigh. Take your front hand out, let it come and rest on the handle, take the back arm back, come and rest on the handle, and you actually end up with the same position, the two Vs running down the back. In the old days, the old method of coaching was very much that two Vs would run down the corner of the blade, almost down the splice. But I think with modern cricket and certainly um, development in Australia and a lot of the Australian batsmen, the top hand has moved a little bit more around into a stronger position. So the V is a little bit more central than perhaps it would have been before. Okay, haven't got the correct grip, let's have a look at the stance. Ideally, sideways towards the target. A straight line between our feet, our hips and our shoulders. A slight give of the knees, just to make us able to move up and down the wicket at will. <clears throat> a lot of modern batters just pull this front toe in a little bit just to allow them to hit balls that come a little bit straighter at them. So although we're generally in a straight line, this might ease back in about an inch. It's important in your stance that your head is steady, especially at release of the ball, so that you can judge line and length. So you're looking for your eyes to be absolutely parallel to the floor. The bat tap is going to occur, so just prior to release, the toe of the bat, which is resting behind your back foot, just going to pick up and down. So your hands are coming mid-body, and as they are, the front elbow is just pointing out towards the target. This is creating a figure nine between the elbow, the bat, and your back arm. And all straight bat shots, that figure nine is what's going to control the bat path. As well as having the head steady with the eyes parallel to the floor, it's important that we stand in the right position in front of the stumps. Batters who tend to crouch a little bit and get the head outside the line of the feet would ideally stand a little bit more leg side. I would prefer to see the batters stand with their head directly over the feet because any shot we want to play, we then, it's easier to create a base for that shot. If we start in a position where the head is outside the feet, it's very difficult then to be balanced when we actually want to play the shot. A couple of problems, some major problems with batting can come if this top hand is in a weak position. What I mean by weak is, it could be a kink in the wrist. The minute we set the top hand on the handle, we want this to be very, very firm, almost as if there's a metal rod running down through it. That creates the straight line, the figure nine, and the elbow pointing, and the bat and the hand just become an extension of that. Once we get a bit weak in here, it's almost certain that the bottom hand is going to become the dominant one and we're going to be looking to get all our power from the back arm. We must remember that the steering wheel of our car is this front side and any shots we want to hit, this needs to be strong. That can only be strong if the wrist is in a good position. <coughs> also, it can go too far the other way and you end up almost with the heel of the wrist, this side of the handle. Then you lose your front shoulder. We've already said the importance of being sideways on whenever we're hitting straight bat shots. But just notice how the, as you turn that top hand and you lose this front shoulder, now again we'd be looking to play with all our bottom hand. So at, bat, at ball release, there's a little bat tap behind your back toe. Head is nice and still. As you judge the line and the length of the ball, hands come to mid-body as the front elbow points out to the target. You've now got your perfect figure nine. Whether you want to play forward or whether you want to play back, you've got the basis of a good technique to play your shots. If you do play forward, as your head and shoulder move to the length of the ball, the hands go back. And if you decide you're going back, again, as the back foot steps back, your hands are taken high behind you. This is known as the backswing and step. Against really quick bowling, you'll find a lot of batters will move just before the release of the ball to get themselves fired up and to get them going. It's known as a pre-delivery or a trigger movement. 
and it really is a mix of movements. Some batters at release of the ball will like a little press forward. Others will tend to move the back foot back and across. It really is a case of what works for you. But whatever you do, keep your head still. Problems in batting come where players make their movements, but the head is still moving as they are. Think of your head as a camera. If that's moving, you're not going to get a great image coming down.